Hi, everyone. I'm here today uh, with uh, Dr. Kieran James here in Bermuda, and I want to welcome you all to day one of the challenge. So uh, thanks for joining me, Kieran. Tiffany, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So Kieran is a dentist in Bermuda at Toothworks, and he does happen to be my dentist. Uh, and he is wonderful. <laughs> and so I think that there's lots um, that he can share about health overall, because I know that that's a key part of his healthy lifestyle. So, yeah, um, so let's get into it, Kieran. So let's kind of start at the top and I'll let you go through each of the categories. I know you've been looking at them and just kind of tell me some of the points that have stood out for you or some things that you already incorporate into your life. Definitely, definitely. Um, for loving uh, awareness, I think, you know, that's really uh, uh, one that really hits home um, really hard as a healthcare provider. I think, Tiffany, you can probably identify with this as well. Um, but, you know, virtually every single one of those points we incorporate into our day-to-day -day life. Um, for myself, I think for something to work on, um, forgiveness is a really good one. Um, sometimes, you know, in, in medicine, you can try as hard as, as, you know, as absolutely hard as you can. And, and sometimes outcomes are not what we want. Um, and that's just part of being in healthcare. Um, but it's also, you know, a really uh, wonderful opportunity to, to, you know, be compassionate with patients and to be able to go and revisit and figure out how you can um, readdress a problem to find um, an acceptable outcome for them. Um, so I think that one, that one really kind of embodies the entire healthcare field, or at least what I imagine um, people who are of our similar values um, would, would really uh, view as a framework for health work. Um, Thanks for that one. I just want to say, Kieran, because you're right that you bring out compassion, but I think self-compassion, you mm -hmm. know, for ourselves, you know, we're not perfect, right? And and we don't ever always get things 100%. Uh, and that ability to be able to recognize what we learned from that opportunity and then to be able to move forward. Definitely, definitely. There are so many learning experiences in healthcare. Um, for, uh, for narrowed feet. Feeding windows, again, I think I, I'm going to come back to, to my employment for a couple of reasons. I mean, first and foremost, that we don't get the, and I'm sure you can, again, uh, empathize with this, that, that we have a profession that really does limit um, the amount of time you can spend eating just because there is only so much time in a day. Um, and a lot of it is, is uh, spent with patients. But um, one, I think that particularly resonates well with me as a, a dentist is, um, a little more broadly, not the one liter of, of water before uh, eating or drinking anything, but, um, you know, increasing water intake is really important in uh, uh, the dental field for a variety of reasons. I think first and foremost, um, you should uh, obviously be drinking as much water as you possibly can because it increases salivary flow and sal saliva is extraordinarily important to uh, ensuring um, our teeth are remineralized when they are exposed to uh, acids and, and potential pathogens. Um, but, you know, more broadly, um, we really love it when after patients eat, um, they rinse their mouth out. It's a really fantastic opportunity um, for patients to clear out acids and sugars, things that bacteria really like that help destroy our teeth. So um, it is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to uh, uh, make your teeth stronger um, and also, you know, do wonderful things for your body as well. That's great because, you know, people often think that they need to buy expensive mouthwashes and everything else. Um, and we have it sitting right there for us, right? Just use water sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, for, for me personally, I think eating is, is organic whole foods, um, just to, to further elaborate on what we were just talking about is a personal goal of mine. Um, you know, in a busy modern life, it, it can be quite difficult to, to find the time um, to just sit down, cook things for yourself instead of relying on all of these things that are um, modern conveniences. Um, it really, uh, the convenience comes at a cost. And I think, you know, identifying those costs and just recognizing that in, in any instance we get that we can prepare food ourselves from the start, um, to a finished product is, is always a good thing. And that's definitely something we have on our list to try and do more of. And I guess with a young child as well, that definitely. kind of has its, 
it's challenges, but also you want to set the example and really give give her really good foods. A hundred percent. You gotta you gotta give people a really good jump off point so they can make good decisions as as they get older. Luckily, my my fifteen month old daughter has a little bit of time before she starts making decisions on her own. <laughs> we do try and emulate um, the the lifestyle we hope she'll adopt. That's yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, for uh, the autonomic pairing section, you know, this is something actually I started thinking about a lot last year. Um, I started doing some uh, reading on cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, and effectively, what it is is looking at the way we think about things and that our own mental framing um, really, in some ways, dictates uh, so much of our life, you know. For instance, people talk about Sunday scaries and things like that. You know, you make it into the work every day on Monday and you're totally fine. And reframing that and saying, hey, you know what? There are great parts of Mondays as well. And just recognizing those and being grateful, uh, you know, that you at least have some part of your work to look forward to, even if there are downsides, just really trying to focus on the positive parts of work, um, you know, as a healthcare provider. Uh, one of the, the best things about going to work is that I fix problems. Um, and that is a, a really, really satisfying thing for me personally. So um, I'm doing my best to uh, make sure I focus on, on positives, you know. Um, and in, in dentistry, you know, that, that not everyone wants to be at the dentist. So bringing positive energy to the table is really an important thing, um, I think, uh, for me personally. Yeah. Well, I feel really relaxed when I go into your office. So that's <laughs> we, we do our best. Um, and then for rest and recovery, um, that has been an extraordinarily challenging one, obviously, as a new parent um, over the past uh, almost year and a half. Um, rest has certainly been in, in very short supply. Um, so that's that's something we're working on. We're pretty good about things like screens already. We don't have screens in our bedroom, um, no TV in there. Um, for the most part, I do my best not to, you know, when I get in bed, there are no phones that come with me. Um, I won't say the same about screen time prior to bed, um, but that is that is something we are we are trying to, to rectify as well. And uh, for morning sunlight exposure, you know, I, I did some really interesting reading on, on uh, morning sunlight uh, exposure and arousal quite recently, and also caffeine intake, interestingly enough. And basically, um, you know, your ideal, you, you can do the reading on your own, but the ideal point at which you take caffeine is about an hour and a half after waking up, not immediately after waking up. And it has to do with caffeine's mechanism action on adenosine and all of these other complex nuances that aren't really worth getting into. Uh, but sunlight was also one thing that was talked about a lot um, in, the, in the reading I was doing. And one minor change that I've made actually in the past probably three weeks is um, I don't have direct facing sun. Uh, in Bermuda, you know, it's it's quite common to ride a scooter or a motorcycle to work just because we have limitations on cars. And a lot of the helmets, my helmet included, has a sun visor. Um, because I'm not direct facing, you know, normally I get used to just riding with the sun visor down all the time. And one of the minor changes I've made that I actually have noticed a difference with is keeping the sun visor uh, up in my morning commute. And I definitely feel more awake when I get to work. Um, when I have that exposure. And it's been, it's been pretty interesting to, to, you know, just check in with myself and, and recognize that, uh, yeah, that there are differences. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, it's that whole circadian balance, right? And yes. it seems like the more and more we learn about the planet, it's like the more we need to really look at how we can best be in balance with it for optimal health. Yeah, I mean, we were certainly designed to exist on the planet we exist on. So, you know, from that standpoint, really uh, doing, doing your best to do what your ancestors did, I think is really never a bad thing um, from, from a health perspective, at least. Obviously, there are some things that we can probably exclude, but um, yeah. Um, and for the, for the last category, the movement category, um, this is one that 
I, you know, my wife is a chiropractor, so we are constantly looking at, and, and also as a dentist, we are constantly looking at uh, making sure our bodies are in, in um, uh, peak physical form to complete our jobs because they're both very physically demanding jobs. Um, yoga has been a relatively new thing for me. I, I do a lot of strength training already. Um, and I've introduced some yoga. Um, I had a spinal facet injury recently, um, and I found that the yoga has been a, a really good adjunct to traditional strength training for me. Um, so that's a that's a, a relatively new one. Um, the other thing we're trying to make sure we're making time for, um, both my wife and I, obviously with the, the new child, um, is getting time to uh, uh, pursue um, athletic endeavors that aren't necessarily always things like going to the gym. So for me, that's kiteboarding. Um, and, you know, I saw expression as one of the points you had made. And I realized traditionally people think of expression as, you know, a representation of feelings. And, you know, there are in performance sports, um, where I don't think there is a traditional objective, um, I think there is a degree of expression as well in these things. And for me, board sports, things like kiteboarding, snowboarding, um, do provide uh, an emotional outlet, um, which has been a very big recognition for me because I find when I have the ability to to go out and blow off some steam with these things when we've when we found a way to make time. Um, for these things, um, we really do end up in, in better places uh, emotionally and mentally. So, wow. well, that's wonderful. You know, I haven't heard in that sense, but it is really it's it's like a creativity, right? And then you get into that state of flow, and yeah, we know like, that that's just such an amazing state to be in when yeah. time stands still. And I do envy you to be able to fly. That's my goal one day, to fly like a kite above those waves. Okay. Uh, and the mind can really break free of the mundane and kind of, it takes us about out of the ordinary for a little while. There was a really interesting documentary um, I watched on a, I, she was a professional mountain biker. Um, and somehow she ended up getting mixed up in the, the drug trade and she was taking uh, motorbikes across the, the U.S. border, the Mexican U.S. border, um, but she gets arrested um, and she comes back and makes a big comeback in, in mountain biking after she's kind of lost her way. And one of the things that she said that really stuck with me was she said, you know, in reference to these flow states, the moment you leave the ground, everything else ceases to exist. And the only thing that matters is making contact again with the ground. And I thought that was a pretty profound statement that really does kind of summarize a true flow state where you have totally forgotten about, you know, that thing that person said to you um, or that project that's looming over your head at work or, or, you know, that stress that really might be a stressor in, um, you know, a, a, a select amount of time, uh, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, these are, these are things that probably aren't worth getting stressed about. And again, you know, using that, like we mentioned earlier, that cognitive behavioral therapy to kind of reframe, um, our, our, uh, ourself, our thinking around all of these things to, to view them as positively as possible, or at least not focus on those negatives. This is wonderful, Karen. I know we could sit and chat forever, but thanks for sharing really all of your wisdom and these points. And I think what people are going to get from this is that, you know, often we think of health as just kind of numbers or, yeah. you know, it's just about the body, but it's so much more. It's mind, it's expression, it's connection to yeah. other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I completely agree with you. Yeah, there is. I mean, there's so much to be had about uh, just sitting down and, and looking at the space between your own ears. Uh, yeah. so but, true. Um, Tiffany, you asked me to come up with a word. Yes, um, people pay attention, everyone. What's Kieran's word of the day? Okay, I guess, you know, we kind of centered around flying there towards the end. So flight will be the word for today, okay? Oh, flight is the word, flight, okay. Well, thanks so much for all your time. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to share this with your patients as well and to spread the good news. And I hope to see you very soon. Okay, take care, Tiffany. It was Thanks. a pleasure.